Here you go. Hello. Our stage timing was a little off here. <coughs> uh, hey everyone, good morning. So you already know Patrick, I think. Um, I'm Solomon. Quick question before we start. Who here knows most of the people in this room? Okay, perfect. So you're going to meet a lot of people today. Um, I know quite a few of you, but I don't know all of you. So this is pretty exciting also. Um, and another show of hands, who was at the, the previous first Moby Summit? Like a solid third, maybe half? All right. Um, so I'm not going to do most of the talking, but I just wanted to thank you for all being here. It, it's, uh, this is a small event, as you can see. It's not exactly DockerCon scale, but that's the whole point. Um, this is kind of the hardcore of the Docker community. Um, the Docker community is 99% people who are really excited to use Docker to build something. And this is the community of people who are helping build Docker. And that's, that's a really big deal. And as you know, we've been thinking a lot about how to improve the process of creating a container platform together, doing it in an open way, um, doing it in a way where that everyone can get something out of it, even if we don't all work on the same product or company. Uh, and even if we don't have 100% of the same goals and methods, we still find common areas where we can get together and uh, move faster. So that's the, whole, that's the whole point of Moby. And it was the whole point of the Docker project in the early days. So as you know, the Moby project in its essence is really uh, our, our, um, our effort to preserve the original spirit of the Docker open source project and give it its, its own space so that it can be just an awesome project, regardless of what products are built out of it. And so we'll talk about the project versus product difference a lot. Um, in a lot of different settings. So I'm rambling a little bit here. I'm still waking up. Is everyone awake? You're, you're on top of things? OK. So it's just me. <laughs> All right. So I took a few notes. Um, so Patrick here is going to take us through a much more in-depth presentation and uh, topics for the day. I just wanted to say a few things. Uh, first, thank you. OK, I said that. But I really mean it. Um, I know you, you're busy people. And you got a lot of stuff to build, so uh, we really appreciate you taking the time to to come in here. I also want to say that this summit will be the first of many. This is sort of an experiment uh, for in, in a format of an event that we can easily replicate and distribute, hopefully across the world. We're lucky enough to have an amazing team at Docker that basically uh, does an incredible uh, array of events, right? You've got DockerCon, you got the meetups, you've got on online meetups, you've got all sorts of different formats. Um, they're really, really good at it, and we're going to utilize that. So you should expect Moby Summits to pop up um, throughout the, 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 coming, the coming months, hopefully in a, in a, in a town near you. Um, so personally, there's four things that I listed here that I'm hoping to get out of this event, uh, and maybe I'm forgetting one, so feel free to raise your hand and, and remind me what I'm forgetting. The, the, the first thing we should do, I think, is <clears throat> talk about completing the transition uh, to Moby. So as you know, we introduced the project not long ago, just two months ago, I think, and um, we optimized for speed and openness, meaning that we we aimed to introduce Moby to the world as early as possible and as uh, half-baked as uh, possible so that we could involve all of you into uh, continuing the work and defining the direction uh, together. So turned out that was kind of a trade-off <laughs> because, of course, when you, when, it, when you introduce something that's not fully baked, then um, there's confusion, right? There's open-ended questions. What is this thing exactly? Where can it go? So, you know, it's okay. I think we're, we've been iterating on it. Um, and the transition is, is making good progress, but I think now is a good time to look back uh, at the last two months and see where the transition is and 
talk about completing it in the next few weeks. Um, and I think we're pretty close, honestly. The goal here really is for everyone to understand clearly what the project is, what it's for, what its relationship to Docker is, what its relationship to the components of Docker is, et cetera. So that's the first one, completing the transition. The second one is uh, talking about the individual components that are currently uh, part of Moby and their individual progress, their individual roadmaps. A lot of the people building those components are here, so we should take advantage of that. And uh, if I start listing them, I'm gonna forget some, I'm sure, but you know most of them, right? There's ContainerD, and there's SwarmKit, InfraKit, LinuxKit, Notary, uh, LibNetwork, there's quite a few of them. And uh, some of them are better known than others, but a lot of them have a, um, a, lot, a lot of cool stuff to show. Uh, and that's one of the benefits of blowing up the platform into individual components. It was painful as we started doing it, but now it's starting to really pay off because the, the, the overall bandwidth of all these projects combined it's much, is much greater than, than honestly what we could have achieved with one big monolithic um, project. Um, oh, and by the way, an important aspect of the transition is also completing the, the blowing up I just talked about, right? The, the, the Docker engine um, got a lot of components carved out of it, but there are still quite a few components that are fused in that we could continue carving out. So um, we should talk about the individual components that exist and also the individual components that could exist in the future. Um, so that's the second point. The third point is talking about a common purpose and role in the ecosystem that, uh, that really justifies creating a, a project like Moby, right? Doing a project is a big investment of time and energy. There's a lot of projects out there, so if we're going to do uh, yet another one, we should have a clear idea of why and what exactly we're trying to achieve, right? So I think it's a fair question to ask, Okay, so we've got ContainerD, we've got SwarmKit, we've got LinuxKit, we've got et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Each of these projects is a solid standalone project. Um, why do we need an overall project? What, what's the point of that? What does it mean? Uh, so we should talk about that. And that includes the relationship of Moby to ContainerD, but also to Docker, to foundations like OCI, CNCF, et cetera. Also the projects that are not currently considered Moby projects, right? Um, so that's the third point. And the fourth point, assuming that we agree on a common purpose and role in the ecosystem, which I believe we will, at least I agree with myself, so that's a start. Uh, I hope you each agree with yourselves too. Um, then we should talk about how we're going to achieve that, which means we should talk about a common architecture and governance, right? Um, the, the, the tricky thing about this project is that from the start, we're optimizing for giving the individual components a really strong identity and a lot of autonomy, right? Um, the goal is not to subsume and to own individual components um, and to constrain the development of each component. In fact, it's the opposite, right? The whole point is to maximize autonomy. But the trade-off is if you have maximum autonomy for each component, then that doesn't give a lot of space for the common project to have its own identity. And really that's, that's a big challenge here. Um, but I think if we, if we pull it off, it can, it can uh, bring a lot of benefits. So I wanna talk about that. And let's see, we allocate a little time for questions. Um, hmm. Does anyone have a question while I'm trying to collect my thoughts? I feel like I forgot something. Yeah, and we have uh, two mics there, uh, plus this one. So these four points, does that, is that, hopefully that hits at least some of the points you were expecting to discuss today. If there's zero overlap, then there's a problem. <laughs> um, questions? No, perfect clarity on the first try. Awesome. Wow. Uh, okay, so in that case, I'll, I'll attempt to give not a full answer, but a big, just a few thoughts on um, that, that common purpose and identity, right, for Moby, because I think really that's gonna be the hard part. Everything else is a few s small wins to give us momentum and get us going, get us excited. Um, you know, I'm sure, I, I saw Crosby. Crosby, are you here? 
All right, he ran away. Uh, he got. He knew I was going <laughs> to single him out. So, you know, if if Dave Chung is going to talk about InfraKit today, I already know that's going to be a slam dunk, right? Um, if Justin's going to talk about Linux Kit, same thing. If Crosby is going to talk about ContainerD, so that's that's really to get us going, to get us excited. Um, the hard part is going to be the identity of Mobi itself. So, just a few thoughts on that. One good point of comparison for Mobi is a distro. But, uh, so distro as in your traditional Linux distro. But it's a point of comparison. I don't think it is a traditional Linux distro, not at all. But what it has in common is that uh, it's focused on assembling things together and allowing different people to assemble things in a different way, right? So there's an aspect of modularity and there's an aspect of um, packaging and distributing code that comes from an upstream, right? So Mobi definitely has upstreams, and it definitely packages these upstreams in, and assembles the packages in a certain way. Uh, and when we talk about common architecture, a lot, of the, a lot of what's common will be in how exactly do you compose these things together, right? I'm, I'm staying a little abstract here, but that's, that's kind of intentional. Um, and, you know, if you, there's a lot of, difficult design work there because if you specify too much, if you go too far and you constrain the individual components too much, then you're going to lose the benefits of composability, right? It's just a monolithic system with plugins. But if you, if you specify not enough, then you don't have, you don't facilitate composition. Um, and, and then you lose the benefits of, that individual components lose the benefits of being combined with all the others, right? Everyone has to kind of reinvent the wheel of composition. And a good comparison would be Lego, right? Uh, Lego's a nice sweet spot in composability. You can obviously do all, anything you want almost in Lego, but there is clearly a common system that's been designed in a, in a consistent way, right? To compare playing Lego with taking 20 random objects from this room and trying to build something out of it, right? That's the difference between no common architecture, and there's a common architecture. Um, so that's really part of, part of the challenge is going to be design that Lego system in a way that fits our needs. Um, and of course, the, the fact that we can containerize components, that helps because it gives us a common set of interfaces. And I think the fact that we, we're all here sensitive to the concept of microservices and the idea that you can compose something, a bigger system out of smaller systems that talk to each other over um, some sort of a network-ish transport as opposed to um, linking into a single binary. That's a common sensitivity that we have. And you combine these two things, containers, microservices, already you have a beginning of a common architecture. Um, so that's one aspect of Mobi that I think is important to give it its own identity. Um, but I think that's only half of it because most distros at least traditional distros, focus on the downstream movement, meaning that the customer of a distro is the downstream user. And I, as you know, I compared us to a historical example, which is Fedora, because uh, Red Hat went through a similar transition of being a product slash, slash project to realizing that was hell on earth as you grow, to um, executing a split between the product and the project, and overall doing a, a good job at it. So. Um, and for that reason, we compared ourselves to Fedora, but Fedora, just like all the other distros of that generation, right, Debian, Ubuntu, et cetera, they focus on the downstream, meaning that the distros in the middle, really should have made slides for this, uh, uh, but really the, the important motion is from top to bottom, right? Um, and I think that's half of it, but I think also it's a wasted opportunity because these days, if you're using the, the final assembled result as a downstream user, a lot of times you want to contribute back to it, right? So the question is, how do you complete that loop of development to integration to usage back to contributions, right? Um, if you're using Fedora, I don't think it's a really easy path to going to, to going from that to contributing back to some components in Fedora. At least it should it could be improved. So I think a really important aspect of Mobi is that we should 
think of having of it as having two customers. Customer number one is the downstream user, and customer cust sorry customer number two is the upstream component developer. I think Crosby got you over there. Developing Container D is the customer of Moby, just as much as let's say me, probably the most clueless technically person in the room, which is awesome by the way. As as the consumer of the final thing, I'm gonna I'm gonna install on my computer a system that was assembled from Moby, hopefully Docker, but could be another system. Uh, I'm the customer, but so is the developer of the upstream component. That's really important because it, it, I think it goes to the heart of um, the identity of Moby. The goal of Moby is not to own or wrap the individual components, right? And ideally, Moby would own no components, right? Um, instead, Moby would be, should be at the service of the components, meaning that if I'm developing Containerd or Linux Kit or LibNetwork or external components, right? Um, I, I need tools and services to help me do that because what I'm developing is a component. It does not serve a purpose on its own. You need to assemble it, which means that every single developer of Containerd or SwarmKit or Kubernetes or Mesos or whatever needs to go through assembly, testing, uh, reproduction of issues, collaboration. Uh, there's a lot of common needs and I think Moby can help deliver that. So anyway, long story short, think of it as having two customers, one upstream and one downstream. Um, and that keeps Moby nice and lightweight, I think. So that's it really, unless there's questions. I was gonna say thank you again. So there's a, there's a team of people at Docker that worked really hard to prepare for the moment where we had our shit together enough to start involving people in the community because we didn't, we didn't want we were okay with a partial mess, um, but we didn't want it to be complete, such a complete mess that nobody, none of you would even want to touch it. So that took a lot of work um, over a surprisingly long amount of length of time, as in years. Uh, there's a lot going on inside Docker and for us to put together all the necessary elements to make this possible was harder than, than it looks maybe. So I just want to say thank you to the team at Docker that that helped and um, endured a lot of frustrations, many of them coming from me. <laughs> um, and I also want to thank all of you and, and especially those of you who um, answered early emails and participated in messy, unclear discussions and helped take uh, Moby from an embryo to a more fleshed out, at least half-baked thing that we could introduce to the greater community. And again, I want to thank uh, all of you here for participating. Uh, and I, I, I wanted to end by thanking one more person who couldn't be here today. Do, do you have the slide by any chance? Oh, um, okay, it's in your Slack. Last minute preparations. Which one? Uh, get your Slack. Oh, sorry. Kind of cuts the flow of the presentation. <laughs> By the way, if you want to see chaos, this is the Docker Slack. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. So this is a picture we took in uh, in 2015, and the guy sitting next to Patrick is a guy called Ian Murdoch, and uh, he's best known as the father of the Debian project. Uh, and as many of you know, probably many of you probably know, he passed away uh, almost two years ago now. And something we don't talk about at all. I think we haven't talked about it. Uh, publicly before, but um, Ian joined Docker specifically to create the Moby project in partnership with Patrick and the people you see in this room and many more. And um, you know, obviously, when he when he passed away, that was a, a big shock, uh, and it's 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 kind of hard to describe the the feeling of being in the middle of a really intense collaboration with, with someone and projecting yourself in the future and building something and then all of a sudden they're gone. So that was a big shock for us. And uh, you know, it took us a while to 
get back on our feet and, and get the project through the finish line. And uh, originally, Mobi was supposed to launch in early 2016, if you believe that. Um, so, and the name Mobi, by the way, was Ian's idea. So we, 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 we did, decided not to publicize this too much because we didn't want to uh, come across as, you know, using Ian's name uh, to make to make Mobi more successful or anything like that. We also expected, honestly, Mobi to be quite controversial <laughs> when we launched because, as 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 you know, in some corners of our community, controversy is a way of life. And so we didn't want to associate Ian with that. But I wanted to share that with you that you know we 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 owe a, we owe a lot to this guy right here. So um, yeah, R.I.P. Sorry, I didn't mean to drag the, the mood down. But it's more of a celebration. All right, so thanks a lot. And yeah, with that, um, thanks again one more time. And I look forward to hanging out with you and, and hopefully may, maybe hacking a little bit. Who knows? All right, and now Patrick, who's going to give you way more useful information than me. Thanks, everyone. Uh, thanks, right. Solomon. All right, so, uh, so Solomon talked about Mobi a little bit. Uh, again, to recap, it's that project that we announced at DockerCon. Uh, the goal is for Mobi to be um, uh, both um, a tool, a framework to assemble these components together, and then some reference assemblies that we're using to build Docker itself. Uh, the, the way we see it at, uh, at Docker is uh, uh, with that metaphor of the, of the building where at the base for container systems where we're having, we're building standards. So that's the OCI effort. Uh, so that's a, a Linux Foundation collaborative projects with 40 different companies. Uh, I think um, uh, we're, we're nearing 1.0. So there are two specs in there, one for uh, runtime and one for image format. The runtime is close to 1.0. Uh, image format should be sometime during the summer. So that's OCI. On top of that, the Mobi project is about infrastructure, so all the different components uh, that implement the standard. So ContainerD is the part that's implementing the standard, and um, uh, Michael Crosby is going to talk about that. Uh, and then on top of that, we build a development platform, so that's Docker CE. Uh, and on top of that, we build a commercial product uh, that includes uh, uh, non-open source components, so that's Docker Enterprise Edition. So that's what it looks like in terms of the Mobi project. We have uh, all these components that we're going to talk about today. Uh, then we have the tool and framework to assemble all these components into different assemblies. Uh, the assembly that we're building is the one to build Docker CE, and there's going to be uh, one release pretty soon, uh, 1706, that will be based on that. Uh, but then we, we saw a lot of people, and actually were really interested in your feedback, like what have you been building with Mobi? So we have a, a bunch of sessions, uh, Birds of Feathers session this afternoon, and we're really interested to see what people are building with this. Uh, we already saw some companies building some really interesting stuff with it, uh, none of it public yet. Once we have some public uh, customer use cases, we'll just publish them on the blog. Uh, I, I really like that uh, that feedback. So when we uh, when we introduced Mobi uh, at DockerCon two months ago, we compared it to the Fedora project, uh, which was Red Hat uh, a separation of a project uh, and product. And uh, I really like that blog post that came out. Uh, I think a month after we announced it. Uh, by Chris Grams, so he's the uh, Red Hat uh, uh, marketing guy who built the Red Hat and Fedora brands uh, between 99 and 2010, and he wrote a very positive uh, article about the, the move to Mobi. Uh, personally, I took it as a, as a good validation of the approach there. So what's new in Mobi? We talked about OCI on, in terms of standards. Uh, the standards in OCI are really making a lot of progress, and we should see two standards coming out in the summer in 1.0. ContainerD 1.0, so Michael is going to uh, tell you about the status of the ContainerD project. So that's the core container runtime that's running containers in Mobi. 
Uh, another aspect that Solomon talked about uh, is Mobi is not a place where components are going to live. It is where components are going to be assembled. So the components themselves, typically they have their own GitHub repo, uh, some of them with their own uh, GitHub organizations, and at Docker, we're in the process of finding a home for some of them. So recently, um, uh, so June 6, uh, David Chung uh, uh, gave a talk at the CNCF uh, Techni uh, Technology Oversight uh, Committee uh, to donate uh, InfraKit to CNCF. Uh, so they are, they are in the process of voting on that right now. Uh, and tomorrow we're uh, giving a talk, uh, David Lawrence is giving a talk at the CNCF talk to give notary as well. So our projects can live in different organizations, but then they're assembled in Mobi, and Mobi is the place that's at the service of these projects. Uh, another aspect of Mobi that's important where the community is really going to meet is around uh, common themes that are important to the container community. And when we launched Mobi, one of the important theme uh, around Mobi and Linux Kit was security. And it's so important that uh, we created, uh, or the security team created, uh, three different uh, special interest groups in Mobi. Uh, they are meeting typically every two weeks. Uh, each of them have meeting notes. Uh, the proceeds of the meetings are uh, videotaped and they are uh, available on YouTube. Uh, so the three SIGs are Linux Kit security, orchestration security, and security scanning. So there's lots of interest around all these themes, and we'll have uh, both sessions about them uh, this afternoon. In terms of the community itself, uh, as you saw, the Mobi website when we launched was uh, very bare bones. <laughs> and the reason for it is that... Uh, <laughs> Basically, I just copied the ContainerD website, I think at 3 a.m. <laughs> the day before the keynote and just modified a few things and uh, shipped it. Uh, now our design team, it's been two months, so they had time to uh, redesign it. And um, uh, we actually shipped the redesign at uh, uh, midnight, yesterday night. So you should see, uh, if you're going to mobiproject.org, you should see the, the new website with a uh, better design, uh, some links to the forums, uh, to GitHub, uh, to Twitter, some videos in there. Uh, we have a blog there. Uh, and actually, if you're part of the Mobi community and you're doing interesting stuff, writing a blog post for the Mobi blog is just uh, sending a PR to Mobi slash Mobi website. You'll see there's a blog uh, directory in there. It's just marked down. It's a Jekyll website. Uh, once your PR is merged, it will be auto-published. Uh, so we have a blog, we have lots of stuff in there, uh, and then we have the events. So this is the, the second Mobi Summit in June right now. Uh, the next one we're having is uh, at the uh, uh, Open Source Summit in Los Angeles. Uh, we're going to have a Mobi Summit there. Uh, so that's in the U.S. Uh, in September, and then in October at DockerCon EU uh, in Copenhagen, we'll have uh, both a Mobi track as part of DockerCon as well as a Mobi Summit. Uh, oh, we also have uh, an events calendar uh, on the on the website. So if you if you organize some Mobi events in your location, uh, just uh, you, I think there's a form in there where you can uh, add them to the calendar. So let's talk about the agenda for today. Uh, so what time is it? It's 9:30. So we're just 15 minutes late. That's fine. Uh, we'll start with. Uh, um, uh, Linux Kit update uh, by Justin and Rolf. Uh, then a ContainerD update uh, by Michael Crosby. Uh, then we'll take a quick break. Uh, then David is going to give uh, an update on InfraKit. Uh, and then uh, uh, Drew and Santosh are going to talk about SwarmKit. And then we'll talk about security with uh, Linux Kit security, security scanning, and the orchestration security, the three SIGs uh, that we talked about. So they're going to talk about the work they're doing in these SIGs, uh, and that you can find uh, with all the meeting notes uh, on the repos. So that's for the morning, then we'll have lunch. Uh, and then in the, uh, in the afternoon, we'll separate into, uh, we have two sections of birds of feather uh, with four themes for each of these sections, so we'll go in different rooms. Uh, two groups are going to stay in this room. There's one group who's going to go in the game room over there. And then for the last group, there's going to be a room somewhere, uh, I think, that's been booked. 
So please uh, choose the topic you're most interested in. Just go to these sessions and, and these are very interactive and it's all about discussion. Uh, in each of these uh, uh, groups, please have one note taker uh, so that uh, at the end uh, at 4.30 we can do a quick recap. Uh, so each group is going to present what they've been working on and what they decided uh, for the project and we'll publish all these notes uh, on the website. We'll probably have a, a blog post recapping all, all that we discussed today for the rest of the community.